Today, using Final Cut Pro, we are gonna punch ourselves in the face just like this. Of course, I have to do the obligatory clone trick. <laughs> First step is obviously filming the video. Now you're gonna wanna think ahead in terms of how you want the clones to interact with the environment and where they'll be interacting with the environment. I was very careful to take note of exactly where my head placement was, right here in the center. I made sure that it was the same height as the microphone here. When I got hit, I made sure that my body was out of the frame as quickly as possible just to make my rotoscoping job as easy as possible. As well as, I made sure that the chair went off to the right hand side so that my clone could grab it very easily and I wouldn't have any conflicting masks. So it was super important to take note of where everything was before I filmed. That way, when I put it all together, it would come together seamlessly. So I punched myself in the face at the same height. Then I went ahead, waited a moment so that there would be enough time for the chair to actually travel across the room. And then I grabbed the chair, push it back into place and sit back down. So let's go ahead and now edit it all together. So the first thing I wanted to take note of is exactly where my face starts getting punched. So right here, it looks like a good spot. I'll mark it with M. Then I'm gonna move forward to where the chair stops moving. Then we're gonna push M again to create another marker. Then we're gonna create another marker for right when my fist should be connecting with my face and we should be good to go. Now from here, cut the secondary part of my roll. So where my fist is coming into frame and we're gonna find the first frame where my fist is in frame so you can see it up there in the upper right hand corner. I'm gonna push command B to cut it and I'm gonna drag it up over and line up the markers that I have created previously. So now if I drop the opacity here, we should see that they are connecting pretty well. Okay, so now from here, we're gonna do some rotoscoping. Now, if you have After Effects or something like that, I definitely recommend you use that method because it'll be much simpler, but we're gonna go ahead and do it all within Final Cut Pro. Go down into your effects and look up the draw mask effect. We'll drag it onto our clip here. And now all we're gonna do is find the moment that has the most of my arm in it. We'll do another roto mask for the rest of my body later on. And it's important that you do these in separate pieces because you never know how complex you need your mask to be. It's much easier to figure it out in small segments rather than one giant mask that has so many extra points that you're gonna have to work with. So go ahead and find the moment where your arm is completely in frame and then we're gonna go ahead and chop it out using the mask tool. Now you're gonna wanna leave a little bit of an edge space because you can see all of this motion blur here and we're gonna fix that with a lot of feathering. Now I'm gonna go up into my feather options and drag it up a bit. And now I'm gonna move the mask so that it's actually fitting just my arm and not including the background elements. Okay, so we now have the first frame rotoed out. From here, we're gonna go over to the control points and add a keyframe. Make sure you don't add it on the transform, you might cause yourself a whole bunch of headaches. So make sure you use the control points keyframe. And now we're just gonna go back a frame with the arrow keys and move the mask up to where my hands position is now. So I'll select one control point, push command A to select all of them, and then I'll drag the hand up in the general location of where my hand is. Then I'm gonna select all of these points with shift and that box selection. And you're just gonna move these around until you have a good cutout of just the arm segment. Now something that's important that I should have noted originally, you'll notice how the background is actually completely in focus on my second element. That is because I was an idiot and I left autofocus on. So make sure you just turn off autofocus and that shouldn't be a problem but I was able to actually work around it within this particular effect and it ended up improving things and making it look even a little bit more realistic because it looked like I had less control over what the camera was doing. So now that I've got the next keyframe, I can go ahead and move back another frame, command A and move all these points into place. And that's the gist of everything. And look how messy this mask is. I'm not even gonna fix it because it's doing the job, that's all I need it to do. 
and we'll go back one more frame, Command A, and get just the hand going right there. So now we have all of those frames of my arm coming in, and definitely for these large motions, you're gonna wanna go frame by frame. However, once the motions get a bit more subtle, we can do you know two or three frames at a time, saving us a little bit of extra work. So I'm gonna go forward another frame, so from this point, you can see how subtle my arm motions are. So I'll jump forward about two or three frames at a time. So I'll just jump one, two, drag all of them over and just continue that process. And so now we should have a pretty decent roto of this punching me in the face. Perfect, we now have a floating arm punching me in the face. So let's go ahead and roto out the next segment, which will be my torso. So I'm gonna push option, click and drag, and that will allow me to make a duplicate of the intro punch there. We're gonna re-add the draw mask, and now I'm going to do it over my torso. So I'm gonna go ahead and find a moment that has the most of my torso, so probably somewhere in here, and then I'm gonna create a little mask to go around that segment. And of course, I'm gonna drag up my feather a bit just so it blends in nicely with the scene. Now we're gonna click and add a keyframe on the control points. If you don't do that, you're gonna be totally kicking yourself. And again, we're gonna go through frame by frame, rotoscoping out my torso. Okay, so I've got that all rotoscoped, so now if we watch back, I should have an entire torso punching me in the face now. Perfect, and you'll see how fast it is. It doesn't matter that the roto is kind of messy, you really don't notice. Now there is one thing that really sticks out to me. If you watch through on the microphone, you can see how the shadows change drastically, and that's because my arm is actually kind of blocking the light that was hitting the microphone originally. Now, what I'm going to do is actually just take that microphone and put it in front of the original video so that you don't even notice the light shifting. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and create a duplicate there and I'm going to actually just reset the draw mask parameter and we're going to quickly add a roto around this microphone. Luckily, this microphone is not moving around too much. From here, I'm actually gonna have it fade in. So I'm gonna push Command T to create a little fade in transition so that when my arm goes in front, it actually fades in. It cuts the light from the light behind so it actually has some real interaction with the lighting, just making it appear that much more real. Okay, so the last thing we need to do is roto out my secondary hand reaching in to grab the chair. We're gonna add in another draw mask tool. This time we're actually going to find the first moment that that secondary hand appears. It's right there. We'll push option left bracket to trim it down. So now we'll play forward and find the moment that has the most detail in my arm somewhere in there. Then we'll take our draw mask and quickly draw a basic mask around my arm. Perfect. And then we'll actually just create a cut here and we'll drop it down on the main timeline. Then we're gonna go ahead and add in a soft crossfade between the two. And you can do this any way you want. And we'll go ahead and remove the draw mask from it. So now if we play through, we should have a full punch to the face. <laughs> nice and smooth. So that about wraps up how you might actually punch yourself in the face with a clone effect using Final Cut Pro. If you enjoyed this video, consider pressing that like button and also consider subscribing as I have two new videos every single week. With that being said, I can't wait to see you next time.